We want to talk about today's Bloomberg Big Take. It's focusing on Elon Musk's Neuralink as it seeks a volunteer for its first clinical trial, meaning, look, it's looking for someone willing to have a chunk of their skull removed by a surgeon so a large robot can insert a series of electrodes, super thin wires into their brain. Now, when the robot finishes, the missing piece of skull will be replaced with a computer the size of basically about a quarter, and that's meant to stay there for years. Its job will be to read and analyze the person's brain activity, then relay that information wirelessly to a nearby laptop or tablet. We volunteering? Uh, actually, what's notable is the ideal candidate is under 40, like yourself, but actually paralyzed. Whoa, so really meant I'm not volunteering. Um, but yeah, okay. Sticking with Musk, his sprawling business empire has granted the billionaire a degree of power and global influence that transcends the industry he reshaped. In a new weekly chat show and podcast, Bloomberg editors and reporters break down the most important stories on Musk and his empire. We're joined now by two of them, Bloomberg's Sarah Fryer and Max Chafkin. Elon Inc. You, with, we've actually all been talking about this for quite a while, but I, I guess starting with you, Sarah, what is the broad concept of Elon Inc.? This is, this is a man you can no longer think of just in terms of his disparate companies. There are six of them now, but he's also a geopolitical force. He, he affects our culture. Um, he owns a, a major communication platform. He's in the car business. He's in satellites, um, you know, involved in wars. He has this, this power that is so, um, so vast and so interconnected that we felt that, you know, even as he becomes a, a more overexposed person, perhaps, directing media with his own messages, he he's underexplained. Um, his work is um, something that, you know, <laughs> takes some journalists who actually have, have spoken to a lot of the people in the, in the Musk empire and who can tell you what's really going on. Ashley Vance, of course, writes today's big take which is about Neuralink and I mean the opportunities of helping particularly people who are paralyzed are extraordinary but of course many would then say for that you need trust you need safety not to mention with spaceships which blow up every now and then cars as well where are you starting with the enormous empire with which he oversees well the show that will drop just in a few hours today it's about Grok which is the new chatbot created by uh, x.ai Elon Musk's um, AI company and I think it's a, it's a really good example of what Sarah was just talking about. You know, X.AI, standalone tech company. They've uh, recruited some really big uh, names from DeepMind and Google. But in certain ways, it's very closely connected to X, you know, formerly known as Twitter, because Musk is sort of using it as an enticement to sign up for this new higher tier of service, which I believe is called Premium Plus. It's, it costs between $16 and $22 a month. And Musk is kind of saying, if you do this, you'll get all the great benefits of X Premium Plus, but you'll also get my AI company. So again, it's it's hard to, to understand but these that's companies. That's the point separately. of Elon Inc. though, right? These companies all have a direct relationship. And also, we're good value here, right? So you get a bonus episode dropping, <laughs> which I think is about Musk's relationship with unions. I find that fascinating, because I remember covering Tesla March 2020 onwards when the pandemic hit. And the union sensed an opportunity because of Musk's position on the Fremont factory at the time. But tell us about episode two. Yeah, so so we actually have two segments on the, the first episode. Episode two is a bonus episode with Ashley Vance uh, on Neuralink, getting into the exclusive some exclusive detail about what we learned or what Ashley learned uh, getting inside of that company. On the union issue, um, it is super interesting because, of course, it, it gets down to Tesla's finances, but it also has a, a serious political component. Right. You know, Sean Fain, the, the leader of the UAW, is really a, a new kind of union boss. And in certain ways, you know, th there, there's a thought that maybe Elon uh, Musk and Sean Fain are, are matched to each other. They're, they're both sort of larger than life. They both have big ambitions. Uh, we will see what happens. Sarah, ultimately, what do you want a listener to come away with? Because many would say, we've had too much Elon news across every outlet of late. What's different here? How do you think you really educate in that manner? I, I mean, I think I think we want to explain, right? And I think, I think these two pieces of news that you may have heard of, the Grok AI and the uh, union 
fight that may be coming up, they both are, um, are connected to Musk as a geopolitical figure and how he might affect the 2024 elections, mm. how he's um, you know, talking with governments around the world, what might be motivating him, right? And so we go into like his, his conflicts and his competition and, and what really drives Musk. And so we, we get sort of behind the news and explain why, why you should care, what you should care about, and what to look forward to um, as, as the world shifts around this, this extremely powerful man.